we're not signed, but they said there's a chance of you signing. I'm not going to pressure you into my agents. Like, I'm not going to pressure you into taking the job or not, but, or like leaving the job or not, but like, I think we should go. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm going. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I was How like, happy were you to put oh, in that two weeks? You were like, the, I'm quitting now. No, 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 no. Not I going back to that meeting. I didn't even have to put in the two weeks. I went right to those ladies and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. Welcome, everybody, to the Athletic Aesthetic Podcast. This is episode 30, the Dirty 30, episode 30, man. We got a great guest coming in today, and we're so excited to have him on today. Tell me a little bit about this guest a little bit for me. Can you do that, Finney? So you may have seen on the Steelers' social media during camp, they did a, a, a post, and it was featuring Christian Kuntz. <laughs> and he was underneath the tent, and he was checking in guests for Steelers training camp. Oh, man. And none of them know who he is as a player on the team. And I think maybe the title of this episode or something should just be like, what's, what did he say? Like, local boy done good. <laughs> <laughs> he is a local boy done good, man. 100%. Duquesne, alma mater. He was, he was a stud at Duquesne. Stud. He, he was an absolute stud. I think Linebacker. he's like an all-time sack leader there. He, he had a funny joke in that. I mean, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> True. He said, I had more sacks than TJ in college. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, like, the dude was a dog. I mean, listen, at the, NF at, at the level of the NFL – it doesn't matter who the position is. There's dogs everywhere. There's dogs everywhere. This guy's a long a snapper kennel. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dog. Dog. And, you know, like, he, he came in. We had an awesome conversation with him just about, you know, uh, you know, just looking him up online and looking at his journey, his path to get to where he's at with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's not as clear cut as you would think. Oh, no, not even close. Yeah, it's, it's all close. over the place. For so, sure. uh, you know, I think – he he fits the brand well. He's he's a great guest to have on the show. I think a lot of you guys are gonna see a lot of him this year. We're partnering with the Pittsburgh Steelers through the Pavement Group, um, and he's part of that because um, you know we we initially met him when we did some work with the Best of the Batch Foundation, which uh, you know we were cool. able to go there and do some pickleball, which we'll talk about. I think we, we recorded this after doing that, so uh, we'll get to talk about our experience there a little bit. And, you know, he's a long snapper, so we're donating $500 for the pavement group and $100 for every extra point. $500 for every field there goal you go. from the pavement group to the best of the batch. $100 for every extra point from pavement group to the best of the batch. That connection is through Christian Kuntz. And, listen, all that money technically gets donated through Christian Kuntz's legs this year. Because 100%. Because snaps are off. If his snaps aren't the there. The money's off. Christian, we love you, buddy, but. Come on, bro. We need <laughs> We need accuracy between the legs. Accuracy this between season. the legs. And accuracy uh, between the legs. Just with, say, say with me. Accuracy between the legs. Believe in yourself, buddy. In Believe all in things you. in life. <laughs> but without further ado, welcome back to the Athletic Aesthetic Podcast. First guest of season two, Christian Kuntz, episode 30. Let's get it. He said accuracy between the legs. <laughs> and the all right, Trey, football season is back. What are you most excited about? Most excited for, man, just to be able to see people compete at a high level, especially about a sport that we all love, man. And other than that, man, it's all about competition. So let me ask you the same question. What are you excited for? I'm glad you asked. I'm excited for grooming season. Grooming season? <laughs> grooming season sounds awful. <laughs> it sounds like I'm going to get canceled immediately. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tell me to say that. <laughs> Those were my words. Manscaped. <laughs> <laughs> football season, like we said, is back. And one of the biggest things that football players struggle with is keeping up with their hygiene. Trust me. I don't know if you've ever been in a football locker room. The boys stink. Y'all stink. Okay? <laughs> so hit us up. We got a deal for you. Go to manscaped.com. Yes, sir. And with 20% off, you'll get with our code. Athlete20. Athlete20 at checkout. They have a wide array of products that can help you not go give your girlfriend a hug after the game and smell like dookie. Okay, so dookie. We, got, we got ball deodorant. We got like a, a beard trimmer because listen, when you get the beard stuck in, in the sweaty, like bro, did you ever have like one of the chin straps on the oh, helmet? And then it's, you literally like take it off. And if you had like the um, the chin strap wrap, like the, oh, the yeah, sock the protector? or like the protector, the protector like, yeah. that thing is, you ever smell that thing at the end of a season? <laughs> Dog. Smell like the back of a barnyard, baby. That is rough. So rough. we need to make sure that the beard is properly shampooed. We yes, need sir. to make sure that it's properly trimmed. Yes, we need sir. to make sure that your press conference after the game is look looking good. right. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, you can't be out here looking crazy. You feel me? So head to manscaped.com. They got you covered for everything you may need. Uh, that's 20% off uh, with code. Athlete20. That's right. You heard me right. 20% off and free shipping, actually, with code Athlete20 at manscaped.com. Uh, your grass tray is not artificial. It's not. Keep it shaved. Got to keep it clean. With Manscaped. Manscaped. I told him I'm going to make paint, another you one. You paint these? Yeah, these are all mine. He kills yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, he kills it. Hey, <laughs> say something, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. They, they look like they're like just like photoshopped on there. <laughs> That's my secret. It's just the baker one. The it's baker, just printed the baker one. The baker one's crazy. So baker, that was right after he got traded, and then he went to uh, went to the Rams and had like two days of prep or something, yeah, and then it. lit it up on like a Thursday night game. <laughs> But you definitely yeah, killed so those, though, brother. I'm, I'm thinking about doing another series this year where so this all happened last year. I painted after every week of the season and picked like my play of the seat of Sauce the week. Gardner. And where's, uh, where's my yeah. where's my painting? Oh, dude, <laughs> that, one, that one sold at the show. Put down like a snapper. No one, no one would buy that. <laughs> so that was a transition. Weren't you originally a linebacker? <laughs> I was originally a linebacker. That was short lived. One day, one day in New England, I practiced against Brady. That's like my my main story. And then I woke up the next day, and they're like, "Yeah, we we just traded for a linebacker. Like, oh man, you gotta go." And oh, then that's man. when I was like, "All right, I'm done playing linebacker. I'm gonna start long snapping." So yeah, well, I want to definitely dig into that a little bit because I feel like people look at your story, and you know, you're a local guy. You're born and raised in Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, and went to. Well, uh, Shar Valley. Shar Valley, yep. Shar so Valley. We just recently found out that he knows and grew up with my brother-in-law, so it's like that's even crazier. It is a yeah. small world. Small world. He Dom's my, one of my guys. I grew. I've known the Gentini family our whole lives. Like my mom went to high school with Dom's mom. So then when yeah. we moved over from the originally we're in Monroeville, moved over once my parents got split, and um, we moved to the South Hills. The Gentinis like. That's who we hung out with. Yeah. That's, a, that's the only people we knew. So. Dom's who you met at my house. Yeah, he's the, a cool guy, man. The tile. He was cool as heck. Yeah. For sure. Um, so I, I used to work for him doing the tile and the jackhammer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So you guys really do go way mm -hmm. back. We do, yeah. Crazy. Oh, that's now, wild. now that we know that, too, we got, we're introducing a new segment today. Maybe we should kick off with it. We might have to, Because <laughs> it's perfect segue into this. What segment? So, Trey, uh, if you want to... So Give we call this bit. part in the episode trade talk. Trade so talk. we want to know what has the blue collar lifestyle done for you? Like, do you have anybody in your family that was blue collar, worked with the trades, worked with their hands? And if so, like, how did they inspire you? Um, I feel like my, my, my grandpa, my mom's dad, um, I mean, really everyone in my family is kind of like blue collar, but right. I feel like he's kind of sticks out. Um, he, he did uh, stained glass, like stained glass windows for churches and stuff. And um, I mean, he would be a type of dude like you call and he could fi fix anything. Or he's gonna at least try to fix everything without like directions or anything. Um, he would worked for the township, Scott Township was like director of public works and stuff. So he's always outside like doing things. But I feel like that's like the blue collar in my family. Like he's always doing something with his hands like masonry work tile work like every he worked with mark gentini actually a lot okay. that's crazy and they built the, the the grotto up at our lady of grace together so um i don't know if you get a chance to go up there in, 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 back in scott township but yeah built mark gentini and my pap like built that that grotto it's crazy yeah do you, do you see like a lot of lessons you learned growing up in a blue collar house translate into sports Oh, definitely. I mean, just just from like my journey being cut, um, like you can't let anything stop you. Kind of like yeah, the, the world's not going to stop. And if those if you ain't if you ain't working your job as a blue collar guy and like right. making money for your family, like you're you, you're not going to be in a good spot. So like that kind of mentality of like never stop and like you got to provide at some point. You know, that's kind of stuck with me. Yeah, that, I'm glad you brought it up too because I like you know. Before we, we jumped into this segment, we were so, so excited to share this yeah. new segment, so <laughs> we just jumped into it early. But <laughs> um, No, I, I wanted to take it back to the high school, and then people think, you know, you're a local guy, went to a local school, you were a standout there. The natural progression is, of course, you obviously play for the local pro team, right? And it's just like an easy path to the NFL. And 
Couldn't be. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I didn't know your, not, yeah. I didn't know your story until recently when you know we met and started, uh, you know, talking about the whole pickleball thing, which I also want to talk about. But um, just looking through the Wikipedia page of like when you were <laughs> signed on to contracts <laughs> and cut from contracts and then signed new ones, yeah, was just insane. It's not like. It's not all glit and glamour. Everyone's story in that locker For room sure. is like, at some point, you know, it's crazy. Like, every guy has a story, and um, not just mine's crazy, but 95% of the dudes in there, like, have some sort of crazy thing happen or a sequence of events happen where, like, they just ended up in the right place, right time, and boom, it happened. And for me, like, I've been cut not nine times, ten times. I mean, I started as a linebacker in New England. Um, and like the crazy part about the story is once I got cut from New England, like I got cut and still thought I could play linebacker. Like, you know, I came from Duquesne and I did well there. And um, I still, still thought I had it as a linebacker. <laughs> and, and, and obviously I didn't. But I went on a workout to Green Bay and there was a dude up there, John Wojciechowski, on Green Bay's personnel staff, like from Duquesne. I ended up like beaten uh he had a record at duquesne that i broke so right. me and him like knew each other from that good and, relationship yeah and like we followed each other and he obviously was rooting for me as a duquesne guy and um once i got done with this linebacker workout i didn't i haven't snapped the ball to this point like i did it in college like i was the backup and then did it in my fifth year because we didn't have anybody and um after that green bay workout he was like we we loved your workout like you did well as a linebacker like let's just see you long snap, like, just get down and do it. And I was like, whoa, Jai, I haven't, like, right. I'm like, I'm not about to get down in front of, like, the, the GM of the Packers and <laughs> 10 other scouts and snap. Right. I was like, I, I haven't even practiced. And he's like, just, just get down and do it. Let me just see. So I got down and I snapped, like, 20 balls. And after the workout, every single person was like, hey, like, you, know, you haven't worked on this? I was like, well, I, you know, I practiced a little bit, but I'm not, I haven't been serious. I th think I'm going to make it as a linebacker. Right. And they're like, this is. If you give this two or three years, like, this is where you're going to make your money. Yeah. And wow. Which is amazing yeah. that you had That's amazing. see that. It was yeah, it was crazy. And then that was in, like, November, my rookie year. And then the following, like, off season, February, I went to some, like, so I gave it, like, November, December, January, three months of work. I went to, like, uh, like they have these specialist combines. It's kind of like, now I'm looking back on it, like, they suck. They're like a money grab, and <laughs> these kids, like, these kids pay a ton of money to snap five balls and like you're paying 1500 bucks to a dude to run a camp you snap five balls oh thanks for coming pat on the back thanks wow. for the 1500 yeah it's like i was like 2500 in with my flight and hotel and stuff already to snap five balls and i was lucky enough to have like a, a flawless day and i signed with denver from yeah. that camp just raw after like three months that's crazy and i got to denver and i was like i did not belong there like i i'm look i look back on it now and i'm like Dude, I, w I was horrible, like horrible. I don't, Tom McMahon, like he's in, he's in Vegas now as a coordinator. He, he was the one that gave me a shot and he, you know, he converted uh, Luke Rhodes, who's pro bull snapper in Indy, was an All-American linebacker at William & Mary, he's a, he's a stud. Um, he converted Jake Bobbemeyer, who was in Denver for the last four years, now followed him to Vegas. Um, and it's just like, it just so ha like it just happened like that. Worked out. And then he wanted to convert me, and like he knew I was raw as hell and had no chance of beating out Casey Crater, who's was a Pro Bowl snapper, and he's in he's in New York now in his like ninth year. And um, but you just I just look back on it, I'm like, damn, like right place, right time. I had a great day. Like if I don't go and have a good day, they ain't signing me. Right. Know, where's yeah. my where where am I? Who knows? You know? Yeah. I probably would have quit snapping. Uh, so I brought this up because I mentioned it. I want to just go through because I don't think people understand the timeline. Of these <laughs> this is the, the time I just literally pulled up your Wikipedia page. Okay, the timeline is insane. Okay, so let's let's go here. This is just starting. Actually, we'll start in your college career. All right. Okay, so Duquesne University, right? Played linebacker, um, and you had uh, two-time Northeast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, huh. Finished 12th mm -hmm. in voting for the 2016 Buck. Buchanan Award, which is what, linebacker or? Best linebacker in FCS, yeah. Okay. So now let's go to professional career, okay? And this is, you had <laughs> adversity in your college career also with injuries, correct? High school and college, yeah. I walked on at Duquesne. Wow. Yeah. yeah. For real. Yeah. I walked on. I ruptured, broke my back in high school playing hoops. Um, 
fractured my lumbar three, was in a back brace for eight weeks, like missed the whole state state finals of basketball. And that was the year we had TJ McConnell. You know, we, we were loaded. Um, we lost in the finals to Newman Gretty. But then my senior year, that was sophomore year. Junior year, I played, but re-aggravated my back. So I only played like six games my junior year of football. And then senior year, I was I ruptured my spleen, didn't play at all. Man. So and you go through all on. this. Okay, I'm, this is all still the setup. <laughs> then you go, you know, overcome that, become an all-conference, all-American player. Then you go to the New, New England Patriots. Ready? Here's the timeline. Going undrafted in 2017, was signed by the Patriots on August 28, 2017, and was waived the following day. Dang. Cup of After, coffee. <laughs> yeah, cup of coffee. <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. the Patriots. The Broncos. Christian was signed by the Broncos on March 21st, 2018. So now you have like a little bit of a gap there, right? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking in that first gap between Patriots to Broncos? That was when I went on that workout to Green Bay. So like I got cut from New England and like we didn't hear anything basically my whole rookie year. I had a couple workouts as a linebacker and nothing was really popping. I had that one workout in Green Bay in like November, November, December. And that was when they were like, this is when you should make the, you know, this is when you should convert. So wow. In your head, where are you at? Like, are you feeling like optimistic or I'm definitely curious? You know I'm what I mean? definitely curious because you're going now from a linebacker to a specialist. Yeah, I, w I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I think I was like too dumb to realize like I was horrible at the time. Like, and I, because if I would look back, <laughs> okay. I'd be like, dude, right. this kid, you're not no chance. You might as well just like stop now. You're gonna be by the time you get in, you're gonna be 27. No one's gonna look at you. No one's gonna give you a chance, but. I was probably too dumb to realize, and I just kept, like, my agent was pushing it, and I went and saw, like, my coach up in Wisconsin, and um, we worked, and I felt better and better each time. I, I lo Every time I long snap, I just felt better and better. Like, I don't know. I they just say ignorance is bliss, right? Facts. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. And then you can All read right. the time. Let's, let's keep going on this. Ready? So you were si signed by the Denver Broncos on March 21st, 2018, and was waived on June 14th. So... You got Dang. about what, maybe two months in here, and OTA, the OTA off-season program, OTAs, and you're like, just getting familiar. Yeah, that's a lot of traveling. Yeah, it was, it was cool though. I had a good experience in Denver and met some met some cool guys. I'm still friends with, but that time was I, I had no business being there. Like I said, like all right, let's no keep business. going. Yeah, I got cut on the last day of OTAs, now I'm which is like this, devastating. Yeah, like you're that's about crazy. to end and go to training camp and feel good, and they call you up and. They're like, yeah, bring your iPad. I'm like, yeah. oh, not again, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jacksonville. Yeah. So Jacksonville's next. Signed to their practice squad on December 17th. Signed a futures contract with the Jags on the 31st of December and was waived on June 13th, 2019. Last day of OTAs again. So last day's a. So where are you at now? You've, you've been through this process. Do you ever get to a point where you're like, all right. I like, I'm, like, this is enough. Yeah, have you I, been there yet? I haven't hit. I haven't hit you with this one yet. So after I got cut from Denver, that was June thirteenth, twenty eighteen. I got cut from Denver, and I'm home. I'm here in Pittsburgh, and I was lucky enough to like live with my mom and valet downtown here at Capitol Grove, Morton's, and um, do some side jobs, put in dog fences, um, just stuff to kind of keep me afloat. Yeah. And um, I didn't hear anything from that time period from June, July, August, September, October. October, about four months, we didn't hear a thing. And I accepted a real, I took a real sales job um, selling freight, I was a supply chain major. Took a real sales job and me and my buddy drove from Pittsburgh to Arizona. I worked for three days at a real job, like went through the training process, everything. They flew me to Dallas on, on a Monday. I got there Wednesday, worked Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They flew me to Dallas, was in Dallas and New England called. And this is like probably like mid-October um, at that point. And New England wanted to work me out. And they were like, like if he's progressed, which I had it to that point, like there's a good chance we're going to sign him. And I'm sitting there in this like sales training meeting. I can't make this up. There's like 200 people in this sales meeting. And like these very intimidating women that were running the meeting were like, <laughs> I mean, they were killers. They were like running this sales pitch. Like I was nervous as hell. I worked there for like three days. I, I just went through like the training protocols. Yeah. Like, and we're role playing like the sales pitch in front of, in front of people. And um, they're like, hey, after this break, like we're gonna role play. The first up is gonna be Christian Kuntz and you know, Abigail, whoever. 
And like Abigail has been there for nine months. She missed her first training session because of whatever happened. And so she like she's like number three in the company in sales. Wow. So like she knows yeah. how to sell. She's been doing it. Yeah. So I get out and we break for like we have a 30 minute break. And I look at my phone and my agents called me like 100 times. My brother's called me. My mom, everyone's <laughs> called me. And I'm like, oh, this has got to be good. I called him back. He's like, hey, we're not signed. But they said there's a chance of you signing. I'm not going to pressure you, and my agent's like, I'm not going to pressure you into taking the job or not, but, or like leaving the job or not, but like, I think we should go. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm going. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I was How like, happy were you to put oh, in that two weeks? You I were like, the, I'm quitting now. No, I'm not going back to that meeting. <laughs> I didn't even have to put in the two weeks. I went right to those ladies, and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry, but what, like, this how is many what's people going on. say, hey, I'm sorry, I just got signed to an NFL contract. So <laughs> you can't they, do this see, anymore. That was like a, possibility or did that catch them totally i think that caught them off guard because they were like in dallas but it didn't catch like the phoenix office where i was working at the time like they knew my situation but and then (laughs) new england ended up not signing me i lost my obviously i left in the middle of training so I lost, wait, lost wait, my job. Wait, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't sign, bro. I just took a workout to like take a chance. And you still and you didn't get the job. <laughs> no, <laughs> chance to have a chance, baby. So, I have been it's sick. I can't even hold. It. <laughs> yeah. So I. So then I was back in. That was like October. I was back in Phoenix, and um, after like one team brings you in, like you're on that list, and like. People are like curious, like, what are we missing if New England's bringing them in? Especially New England, you know. Um, and like after that, that was October. Then I was in Phoenix, just kind of driving for Uber and Lyft and Uber Eats. Eventually moved back home in November, kept training. And then December. Yeah, so that takes us to the Steelers, right? That takes us to Jacksonville. So Jacksonville, you you were waived on June 13th, 2019. Picked up in December, waived June, yeah. And now with the Steelers, right? And we think, oh, you're a Steeler, so this is the end of the road. No, nah. no, nah. nah, we're just getting started. <laughs> so Pittsburgh Steelers signed him to a deal on August 15, 2019. Played in the preseason finale against the Panthers, had five tackles and a sack, and was waived during final roster cuts on August 31st. Were you a linebacker at that time again, or? Yeah, and like uh, they, I know that when they signed me, they knew I was local and. Like, they knew I was a straight camp body. Like, they needed an extra guy. They needed it there immediately. And, like, I didn't care. Like, what, is it, what did it matter? It got me to where I'm at. I'll take a deal right now. No 100%. Go get hit. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. I'd, be a, I'd be a buddy <laughs> back for in one second. day. It's okay. I'll be done after one day. But. So, like, dude, I signed, and, and, and I, I honestly thought I was going to be there for, like, a day or two, and, like, then they were going to release me. And they end up keeping me for, like, the last – I played in like three preseason games. Played home versus um, the first one was against who was the first one against the Chiefs? I think maybe home one versus the Chiefs. Then in Tennessee where they actually let me long snap. In the second half it was pouring rain. My first ever <laughs> snaps in the game was pouring rain. And then the Did final. Did you get them back there though? Right? Yeah, snaps? yeah, they were decently <laughs> clean. Not as clean as they should be, but they were they were they were decently decent. The first one. And then the final game they gave me, and I was playing linebacker and snapping against Carolina and. After that, I thought, I thought I had a chance to make the practice squad after how I played in that game. Like, right. They were like, damn, I think he came in and made some plays. Yeah. But I knew I wasn't there Who long was the enough. Sack on? Will Greer. Okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That's a WU guy. WU guy. I'll take <laughs> that win. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So I, I won't forget that. But then, yeah, they, so then, they cut me. So they, you get cut. This is August 2019, right? Mm hmm. So then we got the Dallas Renegades. <laughs> okay. Jeez, man. So you're you're there from what what time were you until 2020, April 2020, right? So tell me what your time was like there in the XFL. That had to be different. That was a new league at that time. Wasn't yeah, it? it was the first year the XFL started up, and um, we were still optimistic that I was going to get, you know, latch on and maybe get a P squad spot somewhere and try to hold on. But when the Steelers released me, they kind of told me like, we think you should go get, you should go to the XFL and get your straight long snapping film. So that's what kind of what we took that from Coach T and, and Kevin Colbert. Um, they straight up told me. So I went to the XFL, played in that league, and it was great. Like, all I did was long snap, so I kind of got acclimated to, like, just being a long snapper. Um, cool. Then COVID. So now you go through sh- all this down. stuff. You think you're finally on this path, right, of, like, this is what they told me to do, and you can join a league, and then it just gets shut down because of COVID. Yeah. Man. I knew I was in a good, like, a decent spot. 
not as good as like if I would have played the whole season with the XFL, obviously, but I got six or seven games in of, of more film long snapping. So I, I knew I was kind of in a good spot and um, I had a good feeling that like I was actually putting in a dog fence in Lebo and I got the call from Omar <laughs> about like, hey, we want to sign, we want to resign you to a futures deal here in Pittsburgh and let you go through the off season and yeah, see, see how you progressed. So now you're here. Yeah, so that year after that, yeah. That How does that feel? Dude. Like, does it feel like I can take a second? Because I know you're still grinding, everybody's still grinding, but at least did you take time to be grateful and love the fact that you got to where you are now? Yeah, 100%. It's, a, it's like still not real life. Right. Like, I look back at that day and I know exactly what yard I was at putting in that dog fence when they called. And like I was cut a bunch of times during that 2020 season when I was on the P squad. I was on the P squad that year with the Steelers, like up and down. Um, well, yeah, that was the other part. Yeah. I think I kind of skipped over the fact that you were... I didn't you, make it fully Yeah, yet. I yeah. mean, it, it's... Here, ready? Coons was <laughs> signed by the Steelers March, 20th, March 30th, 2020, was waived on August 2nd, had a tryout with the Texans on August 20th, and with the Colts on August 23rd. On November 24th, the Steelers signed Coons to their practice squad. He was released on December 23rd, 2020, re-signed with the practice squad on December 29th, 2020. He was again released on January 6th, 2021. On January 14th, 2021, Coons signed a reserve futures contract with the Steelers, and on February 22nd, 2023, signed a deal with the Steelers on a one-year contract. Yeah, so I was... <laughs> you, first of all, the reason I wanted to go through this is because we talk a lot on the show about like perseverance, mental health, right. things like that. I just want to give you your roses right now, dude. For sure. Because yeah. you did something <laughs> For sure, bro. and you For got sure. the damn contract and you're on the team right now. And that's something that a very, very, very small percentage of oh people can say that they did. Not even just did, but overcame to do. And like, you got to also think, but that's even a smaller percentage of guys who actually made it to the NFL, got cut, and then just gave up. Huh. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Like, and you kept pushing. A lot of people don't think about that. It's like they say a small percent make it into the NFL, right? But there's even a smaller percent make it into the NFL, get cut, and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. I, you kept fighting, bro. It's what, crazy. What kept you going through through all that adversity? Like, what what made you kind of keep course? Was there like maybe one pivotal moment, or was it just a consistent amount of work that you had to put in? I think it was just like what I've done to that point, like from dating back to like walking on. There was people saying like, "Oh, he'll never play at Duquesne," like. So I was kind of like pissed off about that stuff to begin with, like. Granted, like that doesn't. Granted, that doesn't matter at all, you know. Right. But um, I don't know. I guess just I just kind of wanted to prove prove people wrong and prove myself right. Like I wanted to play, and I didn't really want to work full uh, a job. Like a real <laughs> I job. respect <laughs> it. Hey. Yeah. I respect so, it. Like, I was like, I'm, I can't do it. So I just kept I just kept working at it. And I had an agent that believed in me, and I'm still with them. And yeah, we just figured out a way. But we're not. We're not done yet. Like I'm, I'm still competing in camp, and like, sure. Yeah, my so my stuff still has to be right. No doubt, man. I so still work on different things. Like, my, how my training has progressed too is like crazy. Like the different stuff I work on now, as opposed to like, right. Back then, I was like, just snap a, snap, snap 200 balls today into the net. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I, it's kind of. And then right. now I progress to like, all right, now I'm gonna snap like, 25 balls, but I'm gonna work on different like, different like head movements or like different like hand. You're getting your into the season now. Season. Yeah, your like season there's different now. stuff that I'm trying to so people can't time up on a snap or whatever. But yeah, there's like a whole I'm sure art to that position. For sure. That people don't even realize just because of like, people trying to time the count, people trying to. Hundred yeah. percent. There's dudes like they're in there. They're just trying to, especially they're trying to kill the long snapper because like you, long snapper's not the, the best athlete on the field. Right. He's, probably, he's the worst athlete on the field. You know, and. They see that as a weakness, so like. But they don't they, know you they though. Make, oh, see, they well, know that you yeah. play <laughs> linebacker. You play linebacker. No, those dudes are they're some freak shows out there. Just unreal athletes, like fast, strong, everything, huge, big, like. Right. So, just different stuff to like. Be on my p's and q's and make sure, like, all right, I'm the one that has the advantage here, not. Yeah. Not them. Right. Because yeah. I've been on the other end when they had the advantage. Like, if I was, like, twitching a little bit and, like, a team, like, you know, in division or whatever timed up on it, like, they'll know. And right. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, my back. 
back. <laughs> it's not good. Now, how, now that you've kind of overcome all this, right, you had this chip on your shoulder to prove people wrong. You did it, right? You, you got there. You're, you're still competing. You know, it doesn't mean that job done. But, like, how do you keep the chip on your shoulder now? Facts. Well, now I'm at the point where, like, I feel like, now this is, per, this is personal. Like, people probably say, like, oh, he's a, he's a hometown kid, so they're probably giving him, like, you know they're probably you know they want them on the team right. or uh it looks good for them in the marketing like you, so that that pisses me off yeah. like so that now i'm like all right well there's no such thing as any hand, there, first of all there's no such thing as a handout in the nfl like if you're not good enough you're 100 percent 100 percent. so like for people to say that pisses me off and so that keeps me going and yeah. then now i want to be like yeah i want to play i want to play 10 15 years to be like, oh, it was a handout for 10, 15 years? Right. Like, get right. the fuck out of here. <laughs> kind of like, like that. So, now, so yeah, now yeah. my question is, because being a specialist, that's a different type of relationship on the team with your guys specifically, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, it's a whole completely different relationship. And we got with your man, P. Harvey, and we got with a lot of different people who are specialists and with your, with your group. Explain that relationship from your point of view. It, it, it is, it's different, because, like, I don't know, when you're looking at it from a different position, like, right. you, you know, you're playing DB and you're like, Damn, the specials aren't doing anything today. Like, right. like they're not doing. Like, it's just a day where like you, they, those dudes can't kick every day. Like, they're swinging their leg, pr pressing balls, are swinging their legs so hard. Like, you know, put a normal person out there to swing their leg, it would, it would fall off. Right. Like, so like they need a break. And like sometimes when DBs or not DBs, but any position right. looks and they're like, y'all don't do anything. Like, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Because like, yeah, it kind of looks like that. But um, like for me, like I feel like. As long as like we're doing our stuff and like we're not letting the team down in any way and we're making making kicks, punts, you know, snap whatever our snaps are on, like no one's gonna really be like hateful towards you or anything. And like everyone everyone towards the, seems to like gravitate. I don't know towards the specialist a little bit because right. like they envy us. You guys like, are the alpha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, they're like, damn, you are smart. For yeah, you right, you get to chill at practice. That's what I used to think. I can't lie. I was like, yeah. oh, they over there chilling. Bro, I, so I, <laughs> exactly. I went, obviously, I didn't play D1 or NFL, but I was a D2 guy. And even at that level, my, my roommate was the kicker, and we went to high school together. And I was his holder in high school. So I would always try to get myself into the specialist group as the holder, like the backup holder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there were like several occasions where I'd get to like miss conditioning or something because they were working or like they'd be like, all right, specialists got to go. <laughs> you were do. one of the kids that used to play in the dirt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, was to, I was trying to get out of, out of like they'd be like, yo, Vinny, you got to run these extra routes. And I'd be like, sorry, man, they told me that, that we got to get a couple extra snaps in. <laughs> With the kickers. I got to hold a couple. Yeah, that's so, a real thing. <laughs> like, I'll be there next time. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny's never showing. <laughs> no, so so you've been late thing. your whole life. I <laughs> just kind of want to, maybe we're going to have to come to camp. I don't know. I kind of want to test my skills. You'll have to send a few back and yeah. see if I can. Yeah, that we'll thing's see. coming can back there kick? now. I can't kick. You see this bad uh, leg over <laughs> here, and I'm a lefty kicker. It. You oh, feel yeah. me? We're going to have to find a kicker for this operation. 100%. It's not gonna be Trey Tip. We'll have you snap. Oh, okay, I can do we'll that. See, all right. All I right. can do yeah. that. I might be able to get it halfway back there. <laughs> Maybe roll it on the ground a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone seems to think they could snap, punt, and kick. You definitely can't snap. I see. Until you can. Until you get listen, out there. It's my like, boy is Cal Adamitis. Oh yeah, Cal's my such guy. Such a good guy, right? Yeah, he's yeah. the best. He's a but snapper too. He took his job. I gotta give him credit where credit's due, bro. He was a captain from when we won the ACCs, mm -hmm. right? And because it was how serious he took himself, like the timing, how his hands are placed, how fast he's getting it back. Yeah. Like that's very. There's a lot of technicality to being a long snapper, and I just recently learned that. Yeah, Cal, Cal's a, Cal's a pro. Like Cal, like Cal's a, me and Cal train in the off season. It's like unreal how we're both from here and like we both live here in the off season and we get to train with each other. Like that's not that doesn't happen. Yeah, often. Western like, PA. Just develops long snappers. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're known for here. Straight yeah, long snappers. Seriously, but <laughs> no, Cal's a Cal's a good snapper. A really good snapper. I hate that he's with Cincy, but it's what it is. <laughs> it is what it yeah. is. Yeah. And she gets to see him a couple times a year. Yeah. Um, That's crazy though, Ben. Think about that. Like, technically, since he's a rival of ours, right? But like, yeah, yeah. I hear that all the specialists all over the league are like really close. Yeah, like dudes like train with each other. Like, right. Like I, 
I don't wish I, I don't wish a bad snap upon anybody. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Or a bad kick, a bad punt. Like, cause I know how, like hard, how hard we train for this shit. And like, yeah, hundred like percent. One snap like can ruin someone's career. So like for, for dudes to go out and like root against a guy like, yeah, it's crazy. There's probably are people that root, you know, root against other dudes, but yeah, that's that'd be. Yeah, that'd be some I karma mean, I, coming I, back I, your way. For sure. I hope Cal snaps a few over their head for. <laughs> I don't. Personally, like. I don't either. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that you do well, Cal. <laughs> I'm just playing, bro. I talked nah. to him online. Okay? No. Nah. <laughs> he DM'd me one time. I think. We're, You're we're, good. We're, yeah. we're tight. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, yeah, I want the Steelers to win. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couple. Just a couple. Yeah. Or at least the timing's off a little bit so that it they, it puts it on the punter, and not him. I'd rather be on the holder. Okay. No. No? no. It's too much? We're, yeah, hold it. I'm a holder, and, you know, I... Oh, now he uh, takes it personal. Yeah. Now he's <laughs> like, yeah, not the holder. Now he wants to take it personal. That's now. crazy. Yeah. Fraternity out of here. <laughs> <laughs> ain't in it. Oh. Ain't in it. That's huge, man. Well, I want to say this, bro. Like, for you to be a hometown guy, bro, you're definitely inspiring a lot of kids around you that, to believe that they can still do this. And this is just not, like, young kids, but you're thinking about collegiate guys. And guys who are also in and out of their way of the NFL, man. So I appreciate you and definitely commend you for keep fighting for appreciate what you that. love, man. Appreciate for sure. that, yeah. No, I know there's – I get hit up a lot from some some people in Pittsburgh, like some long snappers in high school and stuff, and it's cool. Like, I mean, I, I, I try to help and respond and just shoot in my number. Like, send me film and I'll, I'm going to try to look at it and tell you what I think you should do. But it is – it's definitely cool. Like, yeah. Well, you – I mean, you're – the other cool part, like you said, being from Pittsburgh, is you have roots here. So now, you know, as you progress your career, you're going to get to give back in certain areas that, you know, a lot of guys don't get to do when they get to the league and go to a different city because they're still trying to learn the inner workings of that city. You already know what works and what doesn't work in Pittsburgh and what needs attention and what groups of people yeah. need help. And so, you know, I see you doing, like, the, the youth camps. I see you doing... You know the stuff. So we recently, you invited us out to play pickleball at the Best of the Batch Foundation, which appreciate the invite because now sure. we are like we got a fire lit to play some oh, more that's pickleball. Guaranteed. Yeah, get <laughs> yeah. ready because I'm ready for you. Now. I forgot to bring my pad. I should have brought them up <laughs> should here. Have, I should yeah. have. We Definitely. Should, we could clear out some space in here. I you mean, just get a little volley. Like at least off the Listen, wall. Listen, after he <laughs> caught me, I'm over here thinking in my head, I can get him now. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? I feel like I was moving. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I had a good base. Yeah. What What made you start wanting to play pickleball? It's actually big at, at Shar Valley. Um, oh, wow. Like we played it, yeah. They they we had a a, a tournament every year, and like Saint I know Saint Clair does it. Lebo has courts now. It's real big up north. Like North Park has a bunch of courts. Okay. Um, it it was always big though at our high school. Like we had rankings and stuff. Like our gym teacher yeah. ranked <laughs> ranked our ranked. Where people. were you ranked? Well, I think he was just doing it because he knew I was. Uh, at one point, I was Number ranked one. one in the school. At one point. Okay, okay, okay. But I was always in the top. Yeah, I was always on the top 25 list. Um, <laughs> you ain't sure of it. Yeah, but he put me one for like a couple weeks, I think, just to light a fire under some of the, some people's, you know, you know, just get some yeah. of the tennis guys fired up because they were obviously really good. But I didn't have any business being one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it. I still tell people I was ranked one in the school. Yeah. <laughs> So I think we could put together an athletic aesthetic tournament, and uh, I would love it. Get some people. You got the connections to the people yeah. that actually play the sport. We yeah, can, oh yeah, <laughs> we can get after it. I'm I'm down. It's dude. gonna I get competitive so now. Fun. You know how yeah, it's, no, it's gonna get real competitive. Dude, people <laughs> yeah, take yeah. that. Yeah, that's Seriously. why we like it. <laughs> if it yeah. wasn't competitive, we'd be like, this is lame. No, it's it's fun. And when you get into doubles and stuff, like the doubles are. <laughs> yeah, Vinny, we got to do this. Yeah, ASAP. That would be I'm a right. good idea. That's a that's a good idea. I'm with it. <laughs> Listen, and I don't lose. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, the, <laughs> I'm just saying. After the season, we'll try to set something up, maybe. No, for well, sure. Well, it's got to be in summer, in. right? Is that I'm, a summer sport? And there's indoor court. There's some indoor courts. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. Shout out to the batch. Best of the batch. Yeah. Shout out to them, man. That was a great what's, time. Yeah, what, what's your connection with with Charlie and the best of the batch? Um, you know, I just became close with Charlie through the Steelers and like working the youth camps that we work, and obviously him always being around, and then. Him being a local guy and, you know, me being a local guy and for me to see what he's done in the community and then for us to take that tour and, like, right. that was my first time through there. It was like, cool, dude, wasn't that it? was crazy. It was really like cool. Like, uh, so, I mean, that's kind of, like, you know, a role model for me in a sense, like, all the stuff that he does in the community and um, yeah, for the city, like, it's, 
I, I think people take it for granted too, like what he does and what he gives back. Like we, we stayed there a little bit after and he was outside and there was a kid who was having a tough time, like didn't want to either get in the car yeah. or go home or whatever. And I mean, these kids, you don't know like, you know, what they're going home to mm-hmm. or like what, the, what they're, you know, bringing into that place. But I watched Charlie like stop mid conversation, walk down the steps, go over to this kid and just like, the kid didn't want to hear it at first, and but he, he put his arm around him and crazy. like they disappeared. And he just walked down the street and talked to this kid. The and whole it's way. Like, yeah. That's the kind of stuff the community doesn't see, you know, that, you know, as far as giving back. Like, but that one conversation could literally change that kid's life. Change like, the trajectory of his life. And it was like the funniest part yeah. was he stopped that, like, he walks down there and there's like mad traffic going on. And, and he just walks out in front of all this traffic. And I was just thinking, like, imagine just like driving home from work one day and like, <laughs> like oh. Charlie Batch just like walks out in front of you, like, stop. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's crazy. No, everyone in Homestead knows like Charlie too. So, like, 100%. anybody driving through there knows Charlie Batch. Yeah. Like, it's like, you see him walking down the street. Everyone's like, everyone knows what he's doing. Like, it, right. that's got to be uh, like, that's just cool. You know, it's yeah, it's, you know, the role model. You For know, sure. pe- people don't see that in Homestead. And like, Homestead's one of the communities that probably need it the most too. Hundred percent. And you know. he's doing it. So, so I seen that you just did a camp. How'd that go? It was great. It was great, man. I had like a hundred, hundred and fifty some kids in my morning session. Um, I don't know if. They knew knew who I was. Like, <laughs> they had my shirts on and stuff, um, uh, it, and it had my name on it. And I had kids coming up to me like, "Who are you?" Like, like I'm like, "I'm on your shirt, dude." Like, <laughs> what's going on? But it, it was it was fun. Uh, Kenny came out. Connor came out. That was cool. Um, T.J. McConnell came out. A bunch of Shar Valley High School kids really helped me. The head coach Aaron Fitz. Um, Obviously, my family, my mom, my girlfriend, you know, my brother, my aunt, uncles, like everybody that came out to help. Like, I right. would, yeah, I wouldn't be able to. I, I didn't. I really underestimated like how much work it was, but I had a lot of support, so it was, it was nice. But it, definitely gonna do it every year. That's cool. Try man. to make it better each year. So, but that's really cool. Good man. turnout. Yeah, let us know if we can help, dude. For sure. Get Coach we'll, Trey out there. We'll get you, yeah, we'll get you, you out there. You need anybody I to love co- coaching, coach man, up the for holders? Real. Is there a holders unit at the we camp? Didn't, we didn't do a specialist unit. Boz came out, and um, we didn't do a kicking because it was just, like, with the second graders and stuff. Oh, like, man, they'd have been kicking the balls yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Nah, you don't want to do that. Like, watch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone would have got hit that. in the face. So yeah. Yeah. I was like, let's we'll hold off on the specialist station. Got it. So okay. I got a question, okay, because like he said, Coach Trey, I love coaching. Like, that's one of my favorite things to do. Have you ever thought about, th- like, starting a specialist camp type in Pennsylvania or around this area? <laughs> when you're done, probably. Yeah. You know um, I mean? It would be something that, like, I would want to do, but it would, you know, I would, like I was telling you earlier how, like, I think a lot of, a lot of these, um, I don't want to, like, throw anyone under the bus but a lot of a lot of the stuff going on is like a money grab right um i wouldn't probably i wouldn't charge if, if i were to do it i wouldn't That's, charge yeah. and be for free but like when it's for free and stuff like you don't get the scouts out there and then yeah. right you don't get the players that you want out there to try to right. get the exposure so um i would uh, i would want to probably try to do something to help like high school kids into transitioning into college i got you as a pro as opposed to helping like the free agents that are pros trying to make it and yeah asking for money because we need you know it's probably something along those lines i I, I would be interested in running like a specialist camp for high school to to college kids yeah that'd be cool yeah it'd be cool i was wondering you know we asked um presley a lot about it but like what do you think is one of the biggest things that you've learned from coach tomlin that's a great question too. Sorry, question. catch you a little off guard. No, here. I mean, <laughs> I, you learn a lot. Like, he, if you just sit in on one meeting, you're like, you, you you're like, whoa. <laughs> I'm kind of in shock. Like every meeting's different. He, like he's just off the top of his head, like, like sayings and and stuff. But like, off the field's more important to him. You know, he cares about dudes off the field and like right. what you're doing off the field as as a man and as a husband or you know, he he don't. You know, he wants you to take care of your business when you're in the building, obviously, at all times. But when you're off the field, like, he talks about, like, you know, be a grown-ass man. Like, getting your stuff done, 
and and taking care of the business off the field so like when you get in here you got 100 percent full attention in here and like he's just a role model man like i saw ryan clark on his part or on the whatever podcast he's on um he was saying like he thinks mike Ta coach t could be like way more than just the head coach like I'm like, well, what more you want him to do? But, <laughs> but like he thinks like, he could, dude. He could walk in a room and, and grab the attention of anyone. Like yeah. he walks in the room, everyone's like, eyes on him. Yeah, that's Tom him. Like, like, let's listen to that guy talk. That Tom boy got a swag president. to him too. <laughs> yeah, he's. Would you vote for him, man. president? Yes. <laughs> listen, hundred <laughs> percent. I would. <laughs> If Sleepy Joe can get in there. Honestly, bro, like, he's probably... Hey, you got to give Mike T a chance. Yeah. <laughs> we, Facts. We got we to gotta shoot for the stars at this point. <laughs> yeah, but... Chill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, got a, we got an NFL athlete on our show. Hey, okay? I, got you, I, got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. I'm just saying. <laughs> Mike Tomlin 2026, something, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pro Mike Tomlin message. I'd vote, I'd vote for him. I'd vote for him. Yeah, me I too, know bro. everyone in that locker room would vote. Even, like, when guys leave the Steelers, like... Yeah, everyone... Move. Nothing said because it's just respect. It's a respect thing. Like he tells you how it is. He'll tell you straight up. Like if you don't think you're playing well or you're right. not doing what you're supposed to be doing, like you're gonna get called out. And yeah, it's humiliating. It's embarrassing. But you'd rather have it that way than be be told like, "Hey, bring your iPad up." You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without talking to him, so it's yeah. cool. Um, so I do a segment on the show. When this mm. show started, it was just me, okay? So Trey came along for season, well, halfway through season one. and But the show was initially formed as a combination of art and sports because I like to do concept. This is like, I'm geeking out this summer with all the throwback uniforms and all oh, the, I bet. Like, big, like, I'm big into, like, geeked out into uniform talk, okay? That's so, for sure. like, <laughs> all the swag of the sport, all that kind of stuff. One of my favorite things to ask, and this is the segment, it's called the uniform segment, is where I pass it to you and I allow you to design a Steeler uniform, ground up, helmet down, whatever you want to do. What do you think would look like a dope design? And then we'll mock it up and see, bring it to life. Oh, my gosh, dude. I am, I am not, like, a creative dude at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen my swag on game day? I don't wear it. Right. I just wear my Tripped jersey. That's it. <laughs> you said that's I all I got. So, like, so let, we'll, we'll start... <laughs> We'll start here. What's your favorite Steeler uniform? <laughs> like, considering you got the color rush, you I got the throwback with the yellow helmet. You ain't got no tape, no nothing. <laughs> I don't wear no tape. I don't wear any, I don't like spat wear any it tape. Up. <laughs> don't be laughing. <laughs> Bro, I don't can you wrist. come out week one just full on <laughs> like, screen? Something. I wish. I wish. I just can't. I can't do it. Mask. I just got to be like. Hey, do it like GP. Just do the ski mask. Yeah. I'm losing. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'll Bizing just feel out. weird. <laughs> um, I, I think I gotta go white cleats. Okay. Like okay. All white cleats. Um, white socks. Okay. Not not like high. I like my leggings over the socks. Okay. Like the white socks to show a little bit. See you laughing already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did like the color rush pants. Like how we had the black pants with mm -hmm. the color rush. Okay. Um, it would be cool to have a yellow helmet. I'm not gonna lie. I like the color <laughs> rush uniforms with a yellow helmet. Okay. Like some sort of yellow helmet. Visor, There's some tape. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Some get some gloves. Like definitely put some gloves on. If you're gonna mock up a 46, put some gloves on. I don't okay. snap with gloves, but it's cool to see myself with like can tape we, and gloves. Can can we actually just like follow you around the season to make the hardest long snapper highlight tape of all time? All like, time. Just <laughs> we still owe, we still hope P a, a, a punning one too though. We gotta give you yeah, a punning one too. Well, Presley so, could actually have like that. That could yeah. be a real hot. Like he could have a. Sick highlight tape, like him pinning a ball at the one in Atlanta. Yeah, like I need you to uh, like demolish somebody this oh. year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like put your the front of your hat on somebody's chest. We need to mic him up for a game, <laughs> dude. Uh, Are you a shit talker? Uh, yeah, because I'm like competitive and like like I told you earlier, like they they a lot of teams they go after the long snapper like because right. that's sometimes a weak spot on the punt team and you're really trying to rush and like. They try to really like, like give it yeah. to you in there because they know, like, you know, majority right. of the guys aren't going to give it back. But like I, I, I do talk talk some shit. And yeah. I probably yeah, I've learned to like kind of tone back a little bit. <laughs> but like sometimes you just like I'm not you're not going to I'm not just going to take it in there. Yeah. Like, 
So now yeah, question. What's call the, it Joe's a shit talker. What's the funniest thing that you said while shit talking? Because I I got my number one. I'll never forget it. Gosh, I mean, <laughs> the things just kind of roll off my tongue. <laughs> so I can't say anything in, on the camera. <laughs> I don't know, a lot, of, a lot of guys. A lot of guys give you like the generic, like you're a long snapper, bro. Shut up, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is fair. Like, right. I just look at him. I'm like, I get paid too. I'm on. I'm on the same salary as you. Like, <laughs> we getting paid the same. You're playing punt team. Like, <laughs> you're on it too. Like, you're a special teamer. You're right. like, yeah, that's what it is. But like that's, that. they they all give you the you're a long snapper. Shut up. Yeah. So I just kind of I I did I I've sh- I'm. I shot up. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I'm curious though, what is yours? Because you said you Mine, remember yours. I'm not gonna lie. I probably shouldn't say this on camera, so I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if I should say it because you know how it gets sometimes. Well, they can, they can this guy wants everybody else to answer. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I told dude. I, we I get, stole we this from one of my closest out. friends. Actually, I stole it from him. I was like, you could tell your dad to take a rest because I'm here now. Oh. And I was like, I felt my son. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got him. <laughs> I went back to the salon. I was listening. Oh, I didn't play the rest of the game. <laughs> I'd be so pissed off if someone said that to me on a football field, bro. Hey, bro. I'd find you at the game. Bro. <laughs> That's yeah, out, dude. It's hard to it's hard to talk shit as a snapper. It's like I'm in there focused, <laughs> Can you man. just like, talk mad shit for me this no, season? No, I can't. Like, <laughs> I can't. We should probably you know what? The rest of the year we're gonna gear our podcast towards this everything specialist. Like just make it as fun as possible. Let, yeah. How can we be a part of the special teams? So without actually, being a part of the special teams. Not to share too much, but you know, shout out to the pavement group. We're gonna be sure. working with the special teams unit this year. We can't share the full. Maybe after the recording, we'll we'll drop this. But maybe the time by the time this episode drops, we've already went public and announced this. But we will be around and helping uh, in some way this year in a partnership role with the Pavement Group. So right, I think there's right. a way that we could think of some funny content something fun. out of this. Something fun. Man. Yeah. How do I get a guest snap in a game? Like that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny, Dude, not, you don't want that. You don't want that, <laughs> yeah. A preseason game, at least. Vinny, <laughs> you Vinny, don't want that. Listen, well, he's not lying. When you hear these big grown men just huffing No, and I just want to be a holder. <laughs> I, no, I want to be... On I, the ball. Let, me, <laughs> let me clarify. I want to take a snap as the holder okay. in a game. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm saying, like... In a preseason game. I've been on punt return, and you just hear these big grown men just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't want nothing to do with punt return. <laughs> It gets crazy. <laughs> They're ta- yeah, they say some wild stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. They I do. just want a one day contract. That's it. <laughs> there you go. New England will sign you for a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good on that. I'm good on that. Yeah. Um, well, cool, man. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you making time today. Is there, maybe before we wrap up, what is like your one thing that you would want to say about? whether it's perseverance or just about your journey or a lesson that you've learned in your life? I just, just like everything I've been through, I mean, from injuries to, you know, being cut, being told no, like, um, I truly think, like, you, if you put your mind to something and you want to do it, like, and nothing's really out of reach, like, mm. it, this looked so far out of reach for me and people have said that and, like, you know, um, and now, now it's, like, a complete... 360 like it's true like it's here it's my life now and um it is in reach and it, it always is you know and it always was but you, you just had to keep reminding you you know i had to keep reminding myself that it was and like i said i sometimes i i thought i was almost too dumb to realize but sometimes that's like a positive like for sure you can't listen to what anyone's saying or anyone's telling you and you just gotta put your head down and work Love that, man. I love that, man. That was really cool, man. Yeah. Appreciate you. Appreciate sure. you, yeah. boys. Thanks for Thanks having for me. Thanks for coming on, dude. No doubt. Thank love you. the season, man. Thank you. I like your setup in here. I might hang out up here. Hey, you're anytime, welcome. Dude. I got you're dinner welcome. at my mom's house tonight. She's making hot sausage. Nice, <laughs> man. Yeah. Gotta, get, gotta nice. get the hot sausage. Let me get that Addy. Uh, Appreciate you, dude. No doubt. Sweet. Oh, that was fun. I had a good time. I told you the story's crazy. It's crazy.